Hi there, uh, welcome to body efficiency training and we're here on holiday in Tenerife at the moment and in this video I'm going to be talking about walking as a high level skill. Now walking is something that we all take for granted just like standing up, sitting down, going up and down stairs but all these functional movements are extremely important and we need to gain maximum efficiency in them. We waste an awful lot of energy all day long just by having the wrong alignment and using our body in the wrong way and walking is one of those things that we do incorrectly and this may be controversial but I've done so much testing and studying and working on walking that I'm absolutely sure that what I'm doing here is correct. Now when we walk the first thing to note is I'm walking on the ball of the foot and the tippy toes. Now you can see I've got toe shoes on and if I, if I, I do often go completely barefoot but in this case I'm wearing the toe shoes so the close to, as close to barefoot as possible is the best and we're designed to walk like this. If you think of ancient man, wild man of course they're not having shoes they'll be walking around barefoot and walking around all sorts of terrain. Now if we land on the heel, as we all think we're supposed to do, if we walk landing on the heel, if you think about it, from the heel to the knee there's no cushion. If you land on the heel, the immediate impact of every footfall is going to go to your knee and that knee over time is going to get injured. And I know plenty of people that do running and walking that have injured their legs over time and the real reason they've done that is because every footfall, every time they land, they land on the heel and that clunk, that, that land goes straight to the knee and, and eventually will injure the knee. Now we're not supposed to do this. If you think about it, why would we design a body that every time we take a step we're going to injure ourselves? Of course this is nonsense. So the real way we're supposed to walk is on the ball of the foot and the toes. So at the moment we balance between the heel and the ball of the foot and actually what we're supposed to do is balance from the ball of the foot to the tippy toes and this is a big big difference. Now here you can see me coming down some slippy steps. Now when you've got an uneven surface or a slippy surface if you land carefully extending your toes, your toes go down first and you have a cushion between your toes and the ball of the foot you've, you've got time, you, the ankle comes into play. Now the ankle is the strongest joint, your Achilles tendon is the strongest tendon in your body and we're supposed to be using that. So when we're walking or running we're supposed to land on the ball of the foot and push off right to the tippy toe and this is tricky to do take some practice you're going to strengthen your calf muscle and strengthen the Achilles tendon when you do this and we also need a very flexible Achilles tendon we're supposed to be able to squat down easily and naturally and stay in a squatting position for a long period and we're going to talk more about the primal squat in time how important that is and how to do it but in this video we're concentrating on walking mountain walking or cross-country walking and how do we do this safely and effectively and most efficiently and this is how we do it. We need to walk from the ball of the foot to the tippy toe and that means when you're stepping on an uneven surface the first thing that makes contact is the tippy toes and then you have a cushion as you, 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 uh, you absorb the force from the tippy toe to the ball of the foot. Here you can see me coming down slippy steps. There's a soft sand here and each step is slippy. So I, I don't put my weight onto the foot the, the leading, I hold my weight on the back foot and extend the leading foot toes first so I get my grip before I shift my weight onto that foot. If I drop my weight straight onto the, the landing foot I've got a high risk of slipping and falling and more importantly if I drop onto the heel of the lead foot then I have no cushion. The only cushion I've got is in the knee and the hip and it's very difficult to maintain balance if you slip and this is actually how we sprain our ankle uh, and fall because if you land on the heel there is no way to adjust and all that happens is your whole body is going to fall down but if I land on the tippy toe and take it to the ball of the foot I have the ankle in play I have time to cushion my footfall from the ankle joint from the Achilles tendon which is very very strong and it also gives me time to adjust if I land on an uneven surface and find myself falling. What I have to do if I'm falling is collapse down into the ankle, bend the knee and take the cushion into the hip. So here you can see me running up some uh, mountain steps and this needs to be very free, fluid, light and again this is very very close to martial arts. You need this lightness in the feet, a spring in each step.
and going up the steps the same business I'm landing on the ball of the foot and the tippy toes and that gives me a cushion and a spring in the ankle to bounce up so it's not only ankle the spring has got to be taken from the ankle and the hip joint and the hip joint requires a cantilever in other words you've got to project your hips backwards so you cushion by letting the hips bend so your, your bottom sticks slightly back you have a cushion in the hips when you do this and I'm trying to take all the pressure off the knees so the knees are not doing much work the work is being done by the ankles the calf muscles and in fact it's the ball of the foot or rather the arch of the foot if I'm landing on tippy toes and cushioning from the tippy toes to the ball of the foot the arch of my foot is also doing work so there's work involved here but the work is in the arch of the foot the toes and the ankles and it, this, this is fine. So if I'm doing a long walk, then my toes, my, my ouch of my foot and my, my calf muscle might be aching, but that's fine. These are designed to be doing that. They have super high endurance and you'll see that you recover faster. If you, do the, if you land on the heels or flat footed, then the pressure goes to the knee joint and that has much lower endurance and it takes all the blows. And in fact, what you get is an injury to your knee. Every football is clunking the knee and we want to avoid that. So really to walk, it, it, there's very complex things involved here. The, the, the first thing we've got to do is maintain the, the upright position. So you've got to learn how to stand up straight first. We need the S curve of the spine so the upper body is, is in its most efficient position. And in the upright spine, it, it feels a bit like you're leaning backwards. So you've got to be careful you don't feel like you're falling forward, hunching forward. You actually feel a little bit like you're leaning backwards. But if you're going to take a more dynamic, uh, you need a more dynamic uh, stepping, then you can lean forward, but you lever forward from the hips in the cantilever. The spine is still in the S curve, but you're levering from the hips and you take the cushion from the ankles and the hip joint. So I've done some more videos on the cantilever effect for the hips and also the shoulders, but the shoulders don't come into play so much here. We're dealing with the legs here. Uh, so I'll, I'll put the links to the cantilever effect after this video and, and leave them below as well so you can go back and check that out. But here you can also see some of the lovely scenery in Tenerife um, where we've been walking and you can see how uneven the terrain is. And I'm actually holding just my mobile phone um, loose in one hand so I've got my mobile phone held between two fingers in one hand in front of my body. So this is highly risky. If I, if I take a wrong step or stumble I'm going to drop my my phone and lose it so this is very high risk I'm taking and I'm here quite I'm close to the edge of a cliff here I don't know if you can see that but on the left is a cliff and I'm, I'm stepping around um, you know it's getting close to, to um, well it's nearly rock climbing but not quite there but I, I'm going to talk more about climbing one day as well because cl this climbing is also very very important and requires maximum efficiency and a climber ironically needs a dynamic tension in their body very similar to what we're doing in, in body efficiency training um, but in this case it's just the legs and there you can see I'm standing on the edge of the wall um, and it, it gives me great confidence because I've practiced this walking so long I know that every footfall I take I have time to adjust if I go wrong and here you can see just walking along skipping along very uneven surface I need to have a, a a good eye to see where I'm landing but because I'm landing on the tippy toes and the ball of the foot if I if I land on a wobbly rock I still have time to adjust if the rock moves I drop my body weight into the front foot readjust my hip and my ankle and bring the next foot into play so this is very important for even falling so uh, I'm going to talk more about falling one day as well but how do you fall when you stumble you, what happens is you sprain the ankle because the the ankle joint is locked so your body cannot move all that can ha all that happens is your body goes off alignment and there's no way to adjust it so you have to fall or your ankle uh, gets twisted but here my ankle is ironically loose I've got a tension but it's loose so that I can move my ankle in all different directions and when I put my foot onto an uneven surface the ankle adjusts it's not the knee my knee stays even here you can see some fairly delicate footwork onto possibly wobbly rocks and I do have a step here which, which I, I did step on an uneven rock and stumble a little bit but it doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect me because the stumble is taken by the ankle and I'm not 
I'm not throwing my body weight straight onto the leading foot. I'm controlling my body weight on the back foot and extending the front foot. So before I, I put full weight onto the front foot, I'm adjusting. And it's very important. And here you can see I'm quite high up and it's a, amazing views across Tenerife here. But mountain walking is really, really great fun. And when you have this skill, it's extremely efficient. You have uh, very, very high endurance because the hip, uh, the, sorry, the ankles and the, the, the arch of the foot are extremely strong. And we're just not used to using them. So it takes a few years to really strengthen up the ball of the foot, uh, the, the arch of the foot and the ankle. But when you do, you have very, very great endurance. And I believe if you can walk efficiently, you will have indefinite endurance. Your body is designed to do this. You can just walk for hours and hours, days and days. The problem we have is we're taking impact in the knee and we're doing too much work. And that work is unnecessary. You see, each footfall I take, there's an alternate. I'm alternating between tension and relaxation. When I've got my weight on one leg, that leg holds a certain amount of tension, but the tension is between the hip joint and the ankle, not the knee, and the other leg, as it leaves us forward, is relaxed. So we're alternating between yin and yang, tension and relaxation. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next video.